Thanks, Ross. All right, so welcome to our what was supposed to be lunch and learn, but now which is um, because of my uh, miscalculation of timing. Um, and out. Oh, um, Ross, can you send Toby the link, please? <laughs> um, uh, is going to be my, uh, I guess, basically a, a tour of some of the resources that I am aware of and that I have been going to in terms of core vocabulary. Um, and also, I'm hoping that if any of you have some resources that I haven't um, been able to, or that I haven't highlighted, that we'll have some time at the end to do that. So uh, off we go. There's lots to cover, so I'm going to try and move pretty quickly here. Come on, computer. There. All right, so a little bit of a review. I'm sure this is not new to folks online today, but I thought if we're going to talk about core vocabulary, we should just review a little bit about what we're saying. So in uh, our everyday speaking, um, we most of what we say is um, communicated with really a relatively few number of words. So about 200, depends on which research you go to um, and uh, how many words are core, but it's consistently um, across the research that it's somewhere in the area of about 200 words makes up about 85% of what we say. And this core is, our, is vocabulary, is language, our words that we use across all kinds of different contexts and places and topics. So it's words that we use throughout the day in a variety of different ways. Um, again, a little bit uh, small set of, of words and that we are used frequently across contexts. And rather than in, in the past, and certainly I have done this myself, um, building communication displays um, that are primarily nouns, um, we are really trying to highlight uh, various parts of speech and as you'll see the core vocabulary word, uh, boards that I will share with you today are really heavy in verbs and adjectives, adverbs, um, words that um, can be, I almost would call them power words if I was going to uh, use a different uh, language but I'm not going to do that because we want to get uh, our language clear. So we're talking about um, uh, various parts of speech. Okay, this is, come on, sometimes it works. Some examples of core boards, and we're going to go to all of these today. Um, the uh, Vail, Gail Van Tatenhove's Pixon project. So really, I would say that the whole idea about core vocabulary began with um, the uh, MIMSpeak language sets, which have now become Unity. And so you can see that they're very heavy in, in, in um, core vocabulary. Today, just about every um, product has uh, a core vocabulary focus because in the world of AAC, it's be become understood that this is a, a very strong way to organize our vocabularies and to introduce vocabularies. And then here at the bottom is the one from Project Core. All right, uh, this is one that um, many people are probably familiar with because uh, many of you have seen Karen Erickson's work. We've talked about it before. This is her uh, 40 core words um, and from the, the Dynamic Learning Maps uh, website. As you'll see when we go to Project Core, Karen has reduced this a little bit. The way that she came up, or with the way that they came up with these original 40 is to look at a whole bunch of different uh, core vocabulary um, lists and find the ones that would be most valuable in uh, educational settings. So these are a great set of words, but if you're thinking about core vocabulary for preschoolers or other contexts, you might want to start from this list but not be absolutely married to it because, um, uh, and actually as we all see, um, they've modified it a bit based on some further research. This I'm um, borrowing from uh, Toby Scott, thank you Toby, who borrowed it from Maureen Nevers, which is the idea of looking at how flexible the core vocabulary words is. So with one word, example here, the word different, you can use that word in all kinds of different contexts and all kinds of different ways. So instead, I want a different book. I 
uh, commenting on a picture. Your picture is different. It's different from mine. Your drawing is different from mine. You can use it in math concepts. Um, the number is different from that. Um, the difference is he's acting differently. So we can take that one word and have lots and lots and lots of opportunities to use it. Again, as uh, Karen Erickson would say, and as Linda Burkhart would say, and Carolyn Muswhite would say, there's Toby, hello Toby, um, that we, um, we need repetition. Kids need lots of chances to learn these things with variety. So they need it over and over and over again. And core, using core vocabulary gives us lots of chances to do this. Another example, again, thanks to Toby, um, using the word turn. It's one of my favorite words. And I have to say on one of the site, uh, the um, core sets that I'm going to show you, it doesn't have the word turn and it drives me bananas. So I would be adding that. Um, so turn, if we're thinking about using that one word across the day, turn the page, your turn, my turn, I want to turn. Oh, let's turn the channel. Let's turn it up. Let's turn it down. Let's turn it off. Let's turn it on. Um, we're going to turn the corner when you're going to the gym. You turn the corner. Um, I'm going to turn away from you if you um, keep acting silly. I don't know, whatever. So you can see that there's lots and lots of ways. And those are a couple of examples. I'm going to... Uh, as always, start my tour of the core vocabulary with, um, to my mind, uh, the site that is the one go-to, and I hope everybody knows it about Practical AAC. If you don't, follow me, and off we go to see Practical AAC. This is the wonderful Carol Zangari. And so when we go to the homepage, number one, you're going to want to see what she's got some wonderful posts always this week, but I'm going to go in and I'm going to just do a um, search for core vocabulary. And um, you can see the 316 searches. So she typically does things that um, uh, a year of resources for core vocabulary. So if we click on that um, post, we go back to it, which is from December. Um, she's got all kinds of marvelous um, links here, some of which I will go to today, but not all. So you might want to bookmark this. Lovely ideas of how we can think about using the different words and highlighting the different words. So uh, practical AAC, oops, here, sorry, I'm turning that off, is a wonderful resource to um, make sure that you go to and Carol's got millions of things about core vocabulary here. So that was the one from November. She has another core vocabulary um, from September, the beginning of the year. And you can go back to other past years as well. So um, I highly recommend that you uh, um, explore that further. Um, I'm not going to go through all of those today today because it's sort of a theoretically at least a lunch and learn session. Um, I'm just going to point you at some of these things and walk you through so that hopefully when you go back you can remember, oh yeah, that's a place that I would want to go and look at that. Now the next one is the Project Core site and again this is from the Center for Literacy and Disability Studies um, at, at Chapel Hill and I'm going to ask you didn't put the link in there, which is really silly. Um, so I'm going to go Project Core, and I will send out this website or the website. I'll send out the PowerPoint to everyone as well. We are recording this, so if you um, want to go back to these sites, you'll have them, and I'll put this link in the PowerPoint. So Project Core is basically a research project, one of the ones from the uh, Center for Literacy and Disability Studies, and what they've are doing is um, taking from that initial universal core, which um, uh, Karen and Lori Geist, who's also working on this, talks about as these are the main core words that you need to have. Um, and then they're trying to figure out what, what are the sort of the next targeted core vocabulary and what are the more specific uh, vocabulary items that kids might need. But um, I'm going to walk you through some of the stuff that they have here. So for example, they have for you to print out, and anyone who's heard me speak at Lunch and Learns and, and also the session that I did for the vision folks on um, the tactile symbols has seen this site before, uh, but I'm going to go through it one more time again. So they have, uh, Karen 
has put here and her people, the 36th Universal Core uh, Curric Communication Board. Now, already you're going to notice that it, we had talked about Karen Erickson having a 40 location core board or 40 core words um, based on her work in classrooms. They um, re reduced the numbers of being the ones that teachers really use, made a couple of changes, which I honestly don't remember right now, and then left some, um, some I guess, real estate on the side so that people can put in other core words that they might might want to use or alternatively put in um, markers to go to other pages that might be fringe. So those are, that's how that's changed a little bit. When you go down here, what you can see is they have put a variety of different ways for you to access that 36 personal core. So uh, the 36 use is, looks just like that board there, but I'm going to go to the Adobe um, personal use high contrast. And Adobe, um, I'm sure that you guys all know, and yeah, from Lori, um, is a, a print ready. So you can go there and get um, a high contrast uh, core vocabulary board for kids that might have CVI or that might have um, other things available as well. Oh, and Diane, I see that you've asked, is it available on BoardMaker Online? You can download these core vocabulary links to BoardMaker version 6 or BoardMaker Studio, and they will all upload into BoardMaker Online. I have done that myself because I was playing with it. So yes, yes, the answer is that you can, you download the file, and it's a BoardMaker file, but you can import it into BoardMaker Online. So that's a really good question. Thank you for asking, Diane. Yeah, you can do that for sure. Then what they have are a variety of other ways that the books, the, the 40 core might be organized for um, kids who have different either um, visual needs or access needs so that you they need to have fewer symbols on a page. Now, this doesn't mean that you only give four symbols at a time. This just means that these are different organizations depend on depending on how kids may uh, need to navigate the access to those symbols. So again, you can download these. So um, these particular, if we go here again, I'm going to stick with the high contrast, the Adobe one. Um, and I'm going to, uh, what they've done is they've um, got the, all of the, all of the 36 words still, oh, it's slow, but, um, and they've created it in high contrast. So if I didn't have um, board maker or any uh, a, another software program to um, help me make these they've made them available so their their idea is to um, get people to have access to um, resources when they may not have the tools all the tools that we typically think about having to make um, communication boards um, a partner assisted uh, uh, communication book so when you're doing partner assisted scanning same thing, and a poster for a classroom poster, which I think is marvelous. So it's 24 by 28. So, um, they don't have that in um, high contrast, but um, you could blow up the other one. But I, this this classroom poster is something that I know I've built a few of, and this is a real gift to have it presented that way. Um, um, and then um, they have some uh, ideas for how you would actually um, make um, the poster so you've got pull-offs and I'll talk a little bit about that in a while and then finally the tactual symbols that um, that I talked about with the tactual symbol workshop uh, you'll notice again there's only 13 of the um, 36 uh, universal core words there but I know that they're working on um, creating uh, a more robust of the tax rules as well. I'll say at this time we're also looking to do um, 
a uh, follow-up webinar on the tax rules because I know lots of people are interested and people are asking regularly, so how do I do this? So we'll be talking about an implementation um, process more deeply for that. So that's sort of a little bit of an aside. So, so that's part of what's on Project Core. Other things on Project Core, and again, I'm going to have to do this really quickly because we're, <laughs> holy smokes, um, are some really wonderful professional development modules. So. Um, for uh, you can look at uh, the uh, core vocabulary universal solution. You can click on that. Not only does it take you to a video talking about it, it also gives you some handouts and um, that will guide you through the activities that they do. They ask you to do. So it's really a scripted professional learning opportunity. Um, each one of these are so. Um, don't have time to stick with all of these today, but I really do want you to recognize what um, this is a really good one teaching and modeling universe. Well, they're all good, but um, I really do want you to recognize the amazing uh, resource that is being developed on Project Core. Very much, and every time I go here, there's something, you know. It, it, predictable chart writing, emphasizing core vocabulary, all kinds of things that you can embed into your classroom and into your teaching um, across. Uh, so they're really trying to link what they had on the dynamic learning maps and really focus on how they use core vocabulary um, in a variety of ways. So bookmark the site or I'll certainly send you the PowerPoint, you'll have it. Okay, so that's Project Core, lots of resources there. Um, yeah, all right. So I'm going to go back out to the PowerPoint. The next um, place that I wanted to, and again, we have been here before, if you've been on these sites um, or on some of these uh, web and learn uh, opportunities last year, is the communication series that um, is on, on the Angelman's Syndrome, oops, shoot, on the Angelman Syndrome Foundation. Um, I'll have to do this. Um, um, I'll have to. I'll check that um, link before I send out the PowerPoint. Angelman's uh, Syndrome um, site or Angelman.org in the states has a communication training series that is mostly put together by Carolyn Musselwhite and Aaron Sheldon, but other people are. Um, I think Maureen is involved as well. So if I go to communication training series, the reason that I'm talking about this now is that they have some nice um, videos um, that talk about how, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, see where, there we go, sorry. Um, that was where my link was supposed to have taken in the first place. So they have some um, videos on ways to introduce core vocabulary. Now, this isn't to say that you're only going to give those four words at one time. What they're doing in these webinars are talking about ways to use those words across the day in educational environments, in talking with kids, in modeling, in teaching. So again, nice ideas. These are particularly, these core vocabulary uh, webinars are particularly linked to the um, Karen Erickson's work, but you could take the ideas from this and use them with any kind of introduction, uh, introduction of core vocabulary um, in a variety of different settings. So uh, each one of these webinars is about an hour long, so there's tons of resources here too, but you know, take a look at one or two and see what you think. Um, all, all of this that I'm going to share with you today is going to be sort of a plethora of different resources. Um, and I know sometimes it can feel like, poof, too overwhelming. So well, all I'm hoping to do is let you know what they are today and that you can go back again, perhaps, at some of the things that you want to look at. Or alternatively, and I'll throw this out, if there's a site that you want to be, have a guided tour of, we can do that as a lunch and learn as well. So if you want to go deeper in any one of these sites. All right. so. Um, core Vocabulary 101 in the communication series in the Angelman Foundation, Angelman Syndrome Foundation. All right, the, I, geez, I keep saying all right. I know that I'm going to hate listening to this. Um, the next uh, place that I'd like to take us to is uh, 
the Core Word Classroom from Assistive Wear. Now they're going to ask you when you first go there to um, sign up and get a, a login. So it's free, you don't have to pay anything to get in, but you do have to register and get a login. So what I'm showing you right now is myself logged in. Okay, and so they have, again, a variety of different resources, um, one of them being their core vocabulary board boards, which are for any of you who um, any of you where are they? Okay, so blah blah blah. Letter size core vocabulary in um, English, Spanish, and guess what? French. So those of you who are in uh, environments where uh, French is uh, the language of uh, that the kids are, are learning and using, they have uh, French versions as well. So I'm going to go to uh, the US UK front board. Um, these are the boards that I actually um, took around this summer when, when we were um, doing the there, the summer um, institutes, and so lots of you have seen this, and that's how I made those boards to go to the summer institute. I downloaded this, and then there's a backside to it, and I sent them to a printer and got them laminated. So again, you can see that there's many more words here, um, and they have at the bottom on the uh, on the able or assistive wear site the links to what would be. Um, fringe words or more expanding um, with categories. And um, I like this board a lot. Uh, I think there's some really good uh, uses of the word, uh, are lots of good words here, um, some words that are perhaps a little bit more powerful than the 36 that are on Project Core Universals. But this board doesn't have turn, <laughs> which I said drives me bananas. So I think what I would do is um, probably change the A or something, the A, and, and put it into a turn word, um, although it would have to be pink, um, because that's the verb coding here. And I, uh, Karen, or the Project Core Universal Words does not have any color coding support. Um, you'll see that this one does have color coding, and we're going to talk about um, the Fitzgerald Keys color coding for just a minute, which is more standard. This one has sort of gone off. Usually verbs are, are um, green, and um, these um, prepositions and adverbs and things would be, are actually, adjectives are blue, would be is that right? I have to remember now. I can't remember what adjectives would be. But anyway, these would typically be orange. This has a different color coding system. I'm not sure why they chose to do it differently. The other thing that you'll know about notice about this core vocabulary set is that it's not in um, PCS or it's not made with BoardMaker. It's made with um, the symbol sticks um, because it comes from assistive wear, uh, Prolego to go company and they uh, use symbol sticks in their system. So um, while you may you may choose to use this, I would be really cautious about not mixing up the this core board with other core boards um, or uh, with kids that are using um, PCS symbols. But what I what I have done and you'll see an example at the end of our hour together is I've taken the words that are on this and used them to build a little bit more robust um, core vocabulary board in in um, BoardMaker. So um, gives you some ideas for those of you whose kids might be using Prolego to go. This is the perfect um, low tech core backup board um, because it's going to be in the same symbol set as those. So. I'm hoping that this is, I know we're going fast through this, I'm hoping this is making sense to you. Um, and if not, there's always, you can always put questions in the chat uh, or send me questions afterwards. So there's other wonderful resources in the assistive wear um, core vocabulary classroom. So they have um, five, you know, so word, core word planners. So you can go around and thinking about how you're going to put uh, use core words and how you're going to build them into your classroom routines, uh, how you're going to build them into literacy and life skills. So lots of ideas here that they've 
posted for you. So let's go into, um, I'm not going to do morning circle. I am not, morning circle is not my favorite thing. Let's go into sharing books, core word planner. Um, and I will go out to videos and they have a PDF. So there's lots of resources here. They take you through it. They talk about them. They give you a modeling guide. Really, really um, good resources here for you to take a look at. And you can start, you know, what I would say is play with it, start thinking about it. And then they also have uh, a planner, or sorry, a template, so that you can go ahead and start thinking about how you're going to be intentional about focusing on um, core vocabulary, modeling core vocabulary, and pro uh, teaching core vocabulary across your particular um, classroom experience or what, and for parents across the day. Lots of wonderful resources here. I'll maybe take you to one more thing on this page before we move around. Um, so uh, strategies and resources. Again, most of these things have, a, yeah, so a little bit, if we go here, they have some lovely um, examples of modeling and how to um, do modeling, some videos on modeling. Really, this is just becoming more and more robust every time I come back to look at it. Um, so if you are, if you're, and, and the thing is, yes, if you're using um, uh, the Assistive Wear Core board and Prologo, it works, but it doesn't matter because almost, well, every system, even thinking pod, the core vocabulary are in those sets. So these are just some really good ideas of hitting um, and modeling and using and, and talking with and talking about those words that are so important across so many contexts with our kids, okay? So, um, I'll walk you through a couple more. So there's lots and lots of really good resources here, and I know um, that they um, are uh, adding things all the time. So there you go. You can say if you've gone there, oh, so look at this. They've got a monopoly, snakes and ladders. Um, yeah, wonderful uh, resources and tools here that you can, or, or ideas, even if you don't take their particular tool, you've got some wonderful ideas that, that you can start to build some of your own stuff with. Okay, we're about halfway through and we're about halfway there. Okay, so the next um, uh, site that I wanna take you to is, is not, not exactly a low tech <clears throat> system, although you, um, I was talking to Ju Julie Heard here, I'm not even sure how to say Julie's last name, the Toby Dynabox rep um, and about, um, this, uh, and she says they're likely going to have um, um, uh, boards available for, or they're working on boards of, of for printout of um, the uh, of core. Um, when I was their core, um, which is the core first page set. So this is a book. Sorry, this is a page set that goes with. Um, or that can be loaded into Toby Dynavox Compass and I think Communicator um, software. And again, focusing on the, you'll see across all of these core vocabulary sets, many of the words are overlapping because they're the power core words. Um, at Isaac this summer, Toby Dynavox was handing out some beautiful paper core first um, displays. I have a couple of really large ones and a, a few smaller sort of eight and a half by 11 like the assistive wear um, pages. And I asked Julie if she if there was a place to get them and she says, no, not yet, but they're working on it. So I'm hoping that that will come soon. In the meantime, what you could do is just print off this page and, you know, laminate it and do the rest of uh, what you're doing and you'd have a low tech backup if your student is working on the to Tony, sorry, Toby Dynavox core first page set, or um, to give them a, 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 a again a low tech um, system to start focusing on core vocabulary. And um, what you'll see here is this is very. Um, they've used the Fitzgerald keys, so you and and the order, so they start with the order that words usually happen in and. 
um, have colored them according to uh, the more traditional um, AAC colors. So pronouns are yellow, verbs are green, um, and, and adjectives and, and prepositions are, are orange. So I'm thinking I should have, a, uh, I'm hoping I'm getting all of those things right. I actually was trained in linguistics, but man, if you don't talk about that, it doesn't stick with your in your head. Anyway, so let's um, talk about um, what they have here. They have um, resources, uh, so little videos, recording. I'll start this one for a little minute. Four words are the single words you use no matter what your topic is, and they're front and center in your core first page set. In the next few minutes... So, I won't let the next few minutes, we're not going to watch this, but I do want you to know again that they are talking about uh, organizing uh, or organizing around core vocabulary, and they have some nice resources here on uh, implementation uh, on this site as and um, so core first photo albums, profiles, all of these would be focusing on their software, but again, some good ideas for how we can think about uh, using and modeling core vocabulary from the Toby Dynavox version as well, or Toby Dynavox site. Then, next. <laughs> is the Pixon project. I'm going to pause for a minute and have a drink because I'm getting thirsty, my throat is getting dry. And I'm going to ask a question. Has anyone heard of the Pixon project or has anyone used the Pixon project kit? Toby, yep. Anyone else? Okay, so this is new. So um, Pix um Pixon, I guess the best way to do this is just to take you to the site. I'm going to close this one off so we don't have 17 million things open at the same time. Um, Pixon is essentially uh, a low-tech version of MinSpeak. Um, and uh, this is, firstly, this is the, the where they talk about the Pixon product and they want to sell you the kits here. So, okay, that's good. You might want to get the kit. It tells some examples of the boards and um, different ideas for starting to um, basically teach um, MinSpeak using uh, this low-tech system. But, so that's good. Um, but this uh, site, I think you're going to find more useful um, if you're in, number one, if you're in the MinSpeak world, yes, but also even to think about core vocabulary, no matter what kind of language that you're using. So um, they have here for you to download, if you are so desirous, um, a 50 location um, uh, core board um, as, as a board maker file or as a PDF file. And then this um, picks on wall chart for textbooks. Um, I'm not going to talk about that right now, but I'm thinking that maybe we'll do a lunch and learn uh, on moving from PACS to a more lang robust language system. Um, and that would have been one of the things that is this is for. There's a more particular um, program that another, uh, Megan, I can't remember her last name, SLP, has developed around that, and I'm going to take you to that before we leave today. But so, you again, you can um, get uh, the 50 location picks on boards as a PDF and print them out, much the way you could get them from Project Core. They have, again, much, really great, um, or a variety of, um, uh, plant teaching materials. So if you're thinking about um, uh, doing some teaching uh, around um, core vocabulary and, and picks on, here's an example of one of their... A dog for each day. Okay. Oops, sorry. This should be moving forward. There we go. Come on. Come on, son. Monday. Oh, and this is a little PowerPoint activity that you can actually do, and you'll be teaching some of the words in the in the project. I won't take you to all of that. 
Um, so again, lots of good resources here. Now the last one that I'm going to take you to in the, uh, around um, Pixon and Minspeak is Gail Van Tatenhoff site. And if those of you who haven't heard of or don't know Gail Van Tatenhoff, she, I just think she's absolutely brilliant. And she's the one that I think has done the most um, wonderful work in focusing on teaching core vocabulary. Gail was also intimately involved, if not the lead, I think probably in the Pixon project. So um, I have this core vocabulary classroom kit for $75 CD, um, and it's well worth the $75, I think. Again, no matter whether you're using the Unity core vocabulary or any core vocabulary, because it gives you a bunch of different resources to to go uh, from, and you can th once you think about core in one set, it's easy to think about core in another set. Um, I'll maybe just let this is just a short two minutes. I'm going to tell you about the core vocabulary classroom kit, which provides visual support materials for students using the Pixon project, a Unity program, or Lamp Words for Life. There's also a words-only version if you're supporting a student using any other vocabulary program. Let's start by looking at what's in the Core Vocabulary Classroom Kit. The kit has five different visual support materials, starting with the descriptive teaching board. You basically print out what will be the base of your board, lay it out so you get a sense of what it's going to be like, Trim all the edges, put it together. Then you print out the top part. Do the same thing. But for the top part, you're going to cut out the individual cards, attach them to the base, and then you can remove them while you're doing any kind of activity where you might want to describe objects or maybe you want to build sentences. The board is basically a storage system for quick and easy access to the cards. To see how this works, go to my YouTube channel for a demonstration video. Now let's look at the environmental engineering cards. Okay, I'm These gonna stop it there. Cards. And I'm going to encourage you to, I hope that tantalized you a little bit. Um, it's not a very long uh, little video, but the other thing that I would highly recommend if you want to get more ideas for uh, core vocabulary is to go to Gail Van Tatenhove's um, website and her YouTube channel because she's just she's got lovely, lovely examples of how she does this. Um, it's my hope that we might get her to come at some point uh, although I know she doesn't travel very much anymore, so we'll have to see um, um, whether that's possible. But again, another really good site, and if you're interested in, in um, uh, going deeper with this upon looking at some of Gail's work, um, she'll send you that uh, CD, and it seems kind of archaic now to send the CD, um, but um, to... Uh, to you and it doesn't take very long to get it. It's it's really a good resource. So okay. Uh, la la la. Where are we at time wise? All right, we're doing okay. Good. All right. So I'm gonna maybe come back to this. I'm gonna go back. This is um this because this kind of follows nicely on what what Gail um was talking about. This is something that I have been working on um which is taking kind of uh the um project core core board and adding a few more words some juicy words and making some mistakes maybe I put it on my Facebook page if anyone can see what mistakes I made in making this you can uh, send me a little note because there's a few which really make me cranky because this took a long time but uh, again we can pull off these pull them off put them back on use them, highlight them, talk about them. And it, that idea came from Gail, but it also came from this other, come on backwards, other person, um, Megan something or other, who has um, done an intentional movement from, oops, why is this not working properly? Okay, excuse me, I'm gonna copy and paste this. 
Um, so she's got had lots of kids who were using, um, as maybe many of you do, who were used to using um, a PECS-based system. And what she has done is build out, and it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, oh, it's slow, 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 um, uh, what she calls and is trademarked the core vocabulary exchange system. So this whole link will talk a lot about lots of different things, but what I wanted to just, and I, again, download this, look at it, it'll be in the link there. Really good resources on Snug, a bunch of things beyond um, core. But, and am I making you dizzy doing this? So this is essentially what she's started to do, which is to um, have the core board here in the middle, as you can see, and then the uh, fringe vocabulary there, and in a PECS-like system. So kids who are used to building um, requests in their um, for PECS on a strip and handing it over or building things on a strip and uh, exchanging it, now um, we can, now that we are thinking more about the focus on core vocabulary, we can start to do that um, in a giving, keeping them, keeping them with the familiar system that they might have been using, but now focusing more on the core vocabulary piece of that system rather than on strictly being, um, so, and, and having many more functions because of the, the language of the core vocabulary than just um, making requests. So I really think this is quite brilliant. It, um, it's something that she is going to probably be selling based on what I um, can see. And her, um, well, not only based on what I can see, based on what I know from going to her website. So if we go to the SLP, SL Pathways, which is uh, Megan's, um, site, our team, I'm going to get her name there. Megan Brazos is the person that sort of is leading this. And what they have here, um, if any of you are interested in the core vocabulary exchange system, I don't know how much money it's going to cost, I, I don't know, but um, they are, are in field testing of their products, which is great. I'm glad they're field testing their products. And and um, it looks like they're going to be available before too very long. So another way, another resource for us to think about how we can um, uh, use core vocabulary and how to bring kids into a system that is more robust and that has the power of core vocabulary while honoring the learning that they've done um, in a PEX kind of system. And again, that's kind of what I was, Kathy's PEXIS core trial, that was kind of what I was trying to do here, uh, is helping um, a teacher who's, where the child had been uh, using a PEX-ish kind of um, system. And um, uh, she felt that this would be more familiar, so I, um, built this out, and, and then this was some posts that I made while I was doing it, you know, I want do more. So in an, and we'd never start with a sentence that long, but um, I was suggesting to her when they're going through their day, um, if they're going to go to the gym, you, you might say, pull off the strip and say go, or, and the word that I'm probably going to put on there is we go or you go. Um, to the gym, or if we want more of it, you could put more, and when he's talking about his lunch, more of it, or more of the same, or not same, want different. Couple, You, you can do lots of different things here, and it, number one, it focuses the child's attention on those words, and the second thing is it, can, it sort of mimics, I suppose, in a way, what a communication um, device would do in a, in a low-tech way. Um, I am making more of these, and I hope I'll get my language set better, so I'll, I'll promise to share, and I'm also going to be tracking how it's working with this young man. The other thing that I think that this the pull-off um, strip or pull-off 
vocabulary can do, especially for kids on the spectrum, is that you can take it off and sort of, if they're not looking at what you're modeling, you can take it off, put it in their eyes, in their field of view, and take it back. So might be helpful. I, as I said, this is very much a trial. Um, Megan's system will be much more of a robust system, um, but I think um, it's, I am interested and intrigued by the idea of it. So, all right. So there we went through a lot of uh, resources on core vocabulary. Have I missed anyone? Time for you guys to, or is there any questions or um, anything that you want to uh, chime in with? Um, mostly have I missed some things that you guys know about. I'm going to pause for a minute to, my voice is getting sore. I see nothing in the chat. One just popped up in the chat, Kathy. I'm not sure if it was just to me or to you. Okay, I see. Lillian I might have missed it. How can we cheat? <laughs> okay, so here, you guys, this is the, this is becoming for me the most important thing that we need to do, which is go back to the basics and talk about how do we make decisions around systems, around um, using and what's what using a feature match system or feature match process, using the set framework, using some kind of framework to guide our decisions around um, choosing. So based on your question and based on lots of the things that I'm hearing and seeing out in the world, I'm thinking that we need to do a session or two around that decision making, um, feature matching that to sort of some of the basic ideas of what we need to do with AAC as well as assistive technology. Does that sound, and that's way too big of a question for me to <laughs> answer right now, Lillian, but if, if you, if that's a, a topic that people would um, be interested in, either myself or myself with other folks, I think uh, I think it's needed um, in the world. So I don't know if other people's thoughts around that. Do we need to do some focused um, work on uh, uh, feature matching AAC um, uh, AAC selection? Those kinds of things. It seems, seems to be, to be that question. Questions. Yeah, lots of yeses popping up, Kathy. Okay, yeah, all right. On the list, coming to a something near you in the new year, that will be high on the list of things to add. And, and it's funny, I've been talking with a variety of people about that. So um, yeah, we'll make sure that that happens very soon. Um, and may, it might be a series, actually. So Toby, is your hand really up? Yeah, I was just gonna ask the same thing. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> That's a given. There you go. Not All really right. up. Not really up. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else have any other questions? I uh, absolutely. We will talk about decision making and feature matching. Important. Because otherwise, it's just a bunch of stuff, right? Just a bunch of stuff. I think the important thing for today's lesson, I hope today's lesson. Oh my goodness. From this is that. All the systems are moving to thinking about core vocabulary and that if you have nothing, think about giving kids access to strong, uh, uh, to a core vocabulary. The other thing is don't feel that you have to be totally locked exactly to any particular core vocabulary system. Um, I still think part of it is saying what words really um, do we need in this context? So, um, but now that you've had access to lots of different ways to look at core vocabulary, perhaps that can help you in your decision making around which words you want to build on your own boards, et cetera. Okay, I see no more questions and I'm seeing we're coming to the end. So, um, I that's it for today. And I there's a plethora of resources out there. I hope this has been helpful. And I hope that you'll go back and look at more and that um, 
I, and as I said, I'll make sure that this PowerPoint gets out to everybody. And this um, session is being recorded, so we will have it uh, um, available. Can't exactly say when. Sorry, we don't have a bunch of control over that, but the fact that we have got it archived now will mean that we can make it available to to you all. Um, I want to end be, this. It's probably going to be after Christmas, unfortunately, oh, yeah. just because of some of the, the, the shutdown and stuff. Yeah, after Christmas, I'm sure. So, and with that in mind, after Christmas, January is a big month. Um, oh, Toby, I didn't put this in. Um, sorry, I didn't. I I just talked to Toby about this before. So we've got a bunch of things happening in January. I'm, I'll talk about the um, the regular PLCs. So January 12th from four to five, Kelly Foner will be doing what she was going to do today, environmental communication training part two. Now, no one has taken her up on the opportunity to work with her. So she's gonna, ch she's gonna change up part two a little bit, kind of review some of the things and give you again an opportunity to jump on with her if that's something that you have now thinking that you have the, oppor or the chance, opportunity, whatever to, to do. Um, so I ha so that will be yeah the Thursday the probably for most people the first Thursday back you'll get a web link and this will be sent out. Then to remind you that January 19th Jennifer uh, Kent Walsh is going to talk about her research and communication partners. I'll be sending out a uh, article in the new year, um, sort of a meta analysis that Jennifer was involved in, and I know some people not mentioning any names, Toby, have particularly asked me for that article, but I'm going to send it out to everybody to give you a little bit of pre-reading before uh, Jennifer's session. Um, it is That will not be recorded. The January 19th, Jennifer has um, declined to uh, um, ask us not to record and post that. Um, so if you can figure out a way to get there, please do. Uh, it will be well worth your time. And then there will be a lunch and learn. I will not botch it up <laughs> because I'm not doing it. No, <laughs> uh, there will be a lunch and learn on January 10th, and uh, Toby's going to do that. Toby, do you want to tell us a little bit about what what that, what we can expect for the lunch and learn on January 10th, please? Sure. Can everybody hear me? Yep. Okay. Um, my partner in assistive technology, Lindsay Balance, and I last year developed or started. Uh, working on a, a Weebly or a website about switch access. And we kind of let it fall off the wagon because once we started digging into it, we realized, wow, you know what? There's actually a lot more to this and we can, when, then we have time to actually put together. And then this year, the OTs asked if I would present something for them. And everybody who knows me knows how much I love presenting. So I finished, <laughs> finished the Weebly and it became you know, an introduction to thinking about switches using the set process and then um, how, how it works. So I set up six different stations and we all kind of went around and looked at um, speech output switches and we looked at interfaces that would allow switch access to computer. We looked at um, different kinds of mouse emulators. We looked at iPads and switches. And Ross, I have to give you a big shout out. Ross was my teacher. He would just give me stuff and, and show me how it was meant to be. Um, so part of this Weebly is looking at how those things work. And it's a list of resources, um, kind of one-stop shopping is what I was trying to do, where you can look at the whys and the hows and the setup. And then um, part two will be how switches and switch access can provide curricular access. And we'll do some specific work around um, a learning matrix breaking down the different subject areas, where switch, switch work fits in and why and for who. So, Lovely. Yeah. So, yeah. I, we're looking, so I, I'm just going to say um, I was um, told about this by folks at the Glen Rose saying, ooh, 
it was really good. So kudos to uh, I wasn't there. So I thought, okay, um, hearing rave reviews, we're going to invite her. So thank you. I think that's going to be quite marvelous. And that will be in on uh, January the 10th. So mark your calendars and we will be sending um, out more information about all of that. So awesome. Thank you, Toby. Does anyone else have any updates or sharing or anything that um, you want to do before we close up tonight? Okay. You, as always, you guys are such a talkative group. I think we're going to have to find some assistive technology or some, some um, language supports. So anyway, we, Ross and I, wish you a Merry Christmas. And if I was going to put all the other things that we could wish, but I just really like this. So we hope you have a marvelous holiday and lots of wonderful things and lots of rest and relaxation because I clearly know how hard you guys are all working to provide voices, whether it would be low tech, high tech um, communication partner voices for these children who are some of our most vulnerable. So um, I really hope that you have a lovely holiday time, spend it um, relaxing, enjoying, being with family, all of that good stuff. And we will see you next year. So. Good night, everyone. I hope this was a useful uh, for you. Please go back and look at some of these sites and maybe don't start going everywhere. Just pick one. Just pick one and start exploring. And um, everyone has lots of things that can learn and that can be used across all kinds of various systems. So thank you so much. With that, I will say uh, good night.